Good evening, everyone. We'll get started here in just a minute. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, if you can't see my screen, please raise your hand, let me know. Can you see my screen, Ray? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, yes. terrific. Thank you very much. Okay, I think now that's seven, I don't wanna keep you like in a Toastmasters meeting, I wanna make sure I make good use of your time. So good evening, everyone. What I thought I would do, since we're getting ready to start our TLI sessions here so shortly, I wanted to go over what you may have learned about Facebook and then answer any questions you might have about it because it's still some confusing for some people and for some, they may have used it, but not necessarily to promote either their club or for that matter, even District 3. So what I thought I would do is go through some of the basics and then let me guys let me know then if you guys have any questions, okay? Uh, as we did for the last previous meetings, I don't know if you have noticed from the email, these sessions are being recorded so that way people who are not able to join us can still catch up on the information, okay? What you're seeing on my screen right now is our District 3 Toastmasters public group page. There's the setting here where that is showing. On my next tab, this is, well, <laughs> sorry. It's the inbox to our District 3 page, like a business or fan page. At first, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of difference. I even have the same banner, which I did on purpose. We had permission from our brand and trademark department to go ahead and use that. They thought that looked cool. The biggest differences between the two, first with a group, you have to have permission to join. So if you all recall, unless you're not all members on the group page yet, when you ask to come on the page, you're asking to join and see it shows me here that I've joined the page or the group. Anytime you go to a group, whether it's a public group like ours or a private or a secret group, you are asking permission to join them. They won't let you just walk in the door. Someone would have to admit you, and usually one of the page administrators that moderate the group will let you in. On our group page, we have two or three, I think three questions that we ask just to make sure that you're not a guest that's looking for a club or looking for a group. If your members are not members on our group page yet, I would caution them that the questions should be asked, answered if they can. If not, they will get a private message from me asking the question again and asking how I can help them and how can District 3 help them with that. Beyond that, the only other thing you cannot do on a group page is run ads. And I don't know how many clubs actually do this. I know a couple that do. They actually put a budget together and run ads towards more towards the end as they do like speech contests and whatnot to get people to come and notice who the group is. But those are the two biggest differences. On a page like this, you can. Now, again, you're joining a group here. And then when you go to a page, you can like or follow a page. If you like it, you're automatically following it. If you just follow it, you haven't necessarily liked it yet. It's a little confusing, but that is how that particularly works. In our case with District 3, because we now have a page that's created that people can go out and like, I've connected our group page. So if our district leadership wants to run any advertising, they can do that now. And the group, the page will support the ads that are being run on behalf of both the page and the group. Does that make sense? Okay. With posts, and I just made this one to help the train the trainer that's coming up, you can make short posts. They tend to work better both on the page itself. If you've liked it, you can make one. And then also in our group. The shorter the post, the better. People don't always have a lot of time to read. If there's a way of taking them back to a website, you can. In this case, I made a little boo-boo on this post. You can go back and edit the post usually, even on a group page. So I'm going to go edit this because somehow Connie's email showed up with an HTTP. So I'm going to take that out, and that way people just recognize that's an email. If you have a relevant image, like in this case, we have the flyer for 
the train the trainer session, include it, and that helps people remember what it is that you talked about. It's almost like a reticular activator. It helps them remember what the topic was. And there's another post that we did when Mike and I were going to exhibit over at the small business expo that we had last Wednesday. And again, it's a short post and just shows a couple of things. I just wanted to show off his skeleton suit that looked cool. On some of these, you're noticing that his name is highlighted. In case you don't know how to do that, that's called tagging. And what you do then is you do an at symbol and start typing in the person's name. So in this case, I can come down and find Michael or Mike Camel and throw out a test to him. Testing, tagging, how'd I do? <laughs> oh, did we tag you? Did we tag you? And throw a little emoticon in there. But that way, he'll get that message directly. Now, if you don't want the whole name to show up, you can actually back up one space and take out about the last name and it just leaves the first name. And that way it's still an active link when it posts. I can publish that so you'll see that. Still an active link and if I hover over it, where'd it go? There it is. It'll bring up his little profile and that's Michael Holian, our district director. That's another way of doing that so you don't have to have the whole name showing. And then when you, in this case, I'm going to delete it. It doesn't really need to be there. But I just wanted to demonstrate that for you. On both the page and the group, you can create an event. And I really encourage this on either or. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> I think what we're going to try and do and what I'd like to see done on our group page, do a lot of discussions, promotions for like the spring conference, the train the trainer, things of that nature, even the out of Africa that we're going to be doing in the spring with Lori Angel up in Prescott. We've used this for a long time for other things. And I'd like to try and see more formal posts go on the page page itself, but ideally they can act the same way. I can create events here, just like can, I can create an event over here on this page. Again, the only real difference between the two is the fact that you cannot run an ad on a Facebook group page. <clears throat> when you get here, there's a size on here, and I don't know how many would actually then go in and create an image. I do. Sometimes I don't use all the same image. For a page, anytime you're working with images, you work in pixels. JPEGs work the best for Facebook. This size is 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall. For the group page, back over here real quick. Whoop, I thought there were other. Da, da, da. This one, I believe, I know the events are 1200 by 628. I think this one is almost the same, but I can send out an email later and make sure you have this one. This one off the top of my head, I don't remember. I do more pages than groups. I beg mm -hmm. your pardon. But mm -hmm. it should be about the same as 1200 by 628. The 1200 by 628 size works really well with events, whether they're coming from the group uh, or coming from the actual page itself. The reason you want to post events up and post anything up is to get the attention not just mm -hmm. of Facebook, but of Google as well. At one point, imagine one of my client's pages, their page was coming up on at least page two of Google on the very second page, the top. And that surprised them because they figured it would be their website, but they had more mm -hmm. activity between what he was doing and what I was doing on their Facebook page. And it does get Google's attention. So when we think about our club promotions, we're not just trying to hit the Facebook people that are on here, all 3 billion of them. And I think about 1 million of them live in Phoenix, or it seems like it. We're also trying to get out to the audience that's looking for us in a Google or a Bing search. And I wouldn't discount that. This does work for that. When you do a post, either in the group or the page, you have the usual suspects. You can do a photo. You can add some other milestones or whatnot. You can add a feeling or an activity. There are a little more things that you can do on the page than you can when you create a post on the group page. So if you're creating a post, obviously here you can do your photo or video, you can get together a poll. 
The other thing that's very important, and I, I touch about this a little bit for our people who do have pages, there's not that many of them. You can check into a page and tell people where you're at. So if you're doing a training session, say you go to the train the trainer this Saturday at La Casa de Cristo, you can say that you're at the train the trainer session at La Casa. And it's not like otherwise we could tag them at La Casa and tell people where you're going. And that way people can see what's going on. It works better when you're at the at the location and it'll ask you what location you're at on your mobile, not necessarily on your computer, but you can check into a page where you cannot check in on a group page, if that makes sense. When you're managing a group, you'll notice here, there are two people who wanna join this group. One of them I've been in a private conversation with to ask her how we can help her get to a club to go take a look at it, or even several clubs, depending upon her zip code. And in this case, I see Heidi. Hi, Heidi. And Heidi is currently a member of Toastmasters, and she did a great job at answering the questions. So then I just say, okay, you're approved. You're in. <laughs> now, until you're approved to a group, you can't make a post. You can see them, but you generally cannot respond or create a question or anything like that, if that makes sense. Once you're approved, you can do anything, including posting about your club, you have a speech contest, anything of that nature. Last thing I wanted to show you before I open up for questions are these silly things with the pound sign. And I'm sure you guys have seen them for about two or three years from me now. They're called hashtags. And I want to just show you what happens. If I click on the D3TLI hashtag, you start to see some of the history that's coming up with it, including our page for District 3 TLI and some of the posts that have been made about that. This is some of the history of what's been going on at TLI with images, some with a couple, like that one with Tom Ostot, some recently with our TLI Train the Trainer. This keeps all the conversations together so we can see what's been going on, who's been participating, and people who are viewing that, people who are guests, can then go look and see what's this TLI thing and get a feel for what's going on. These hashtags are search terms. So I would use them not necessarily carefully, but be mindful what you're using because people at any point in time can actually click on it like this one and they can go see what's going on with Train the Trainer and what's happening with it. Let's see. So... Let's see, let's see if we wanted to go talk with La Casa de Cristo and they wanted to find out more about that particular location. Now they see what the church looks like. You can message the church right away and find out where they're located, probably by going to their about section and finding out where are they so you can put it on your Google map. But that's how those search terms work. How I find out what to use, that's a little bit more interesting. I start coming up to Facebook itself or to Google and I'll do a search for like train the trainer, which is how I came up with it, to see what's going on with it, what's happening with it. And in Google, it actually got a better response. I'm not sure I'll use it for this one. Again, it's a little bit more broad and playing in places like from Pakistan, for example, that may not be affiliated with Toastmasters. But that's how you search for them to see what will work for your club. I would recommend that in addition to using the D3 TLI, if you're talking about TLI, and I hope you guys do when you go, and then using the Toastmasters one, it should have been in here, it's not, ah, down here, create one for your club. So that way you can start branding your club's posts to your club, and then as people then click on it to search, they can see all the other posts you're creating about your club, all the awards people are winning, all the educational levels that they're achieving and getting a feel for how the culture of the club really works. That will help in promotion of the club as well. The last tip before I open it up for questions, I would recommend finding out then who the local media are in your area, whether they're on the radio, a small community paper, whoever you want to connect with, find out if they have a page on Facebook and like their page as your page if you can. If you have a group, like them as yourself. 
and then tag them when you make a notice and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know we have this event coming up. Let them know what you're doing so that way they will take notice. From what we gathered last week of our meeting with Carrie Hines from the Glendale Star and Peoria Times, she gave us a rundown on how to do press releases. She basically said, just bug them. Keep sending notices in, keep getting their attention, and then make sure at the bottom you let them know, like say in an email, let them know that you can introduce them to the key people you're talking about. In this case, let them know, hey, I just wanted to reach out and let you know we have a meeting coming up where we're going to have an open house. Here's how it's going to work, and I'd love to invite you and be our guest. And keep the communication line open so that way they're more inclined to run a story about you. As we come into the winter months now, and yeah, we actually do have a little bit of winter in Arizona. (laughs) What we're going to find is that the local newspapers are going to start getting smaller. I don't know if you've started noticing that yet. They will start getting smaller by page count because they're running out of stories. People go on vacation. Businesses actually go on vacation, which is kind of weird. So they start running lower on the story count. That makes a good opening for a Toastmasters club to get a little more notice and say if they're offering a special training on pathways, they might be able to get a reporter to come in with their photographer and make a story out of it and bring more attention about your club to their readership. That makes sense? So that's what I would use that for, whether you have a page or a group. The biggest reason why people don't always have pages, especially in Toastmasters, you have to have a stable location. A lot of our clubs don't. They meet, whether it's at a YMCA or whatnot, and sometimes that sponsor or business doesn't want us to reach out to them and tag them and do a shout back to them for whatever reason. If that happens, a group works really, really well. You just have to have someone or a couple of someone's, including your VPPR, be willing to be the admin and help manage the group. If it's a page with a stable location, or if it's a group rather with a stable location, create a page, let the sponsor know you're doing that, and that way it gives them a shout out of a marketing highlight that you're having your meeting there, and then they can be free to post some things that are going on or keep an eye on it in case they have people coming in and they may have a new hire that may want to check out the page as well. Okay, as right now, then I'm going to keep my share on, but I'm going to unmute everyone and I want to see what kind of questions you have. So at the moment I clicked my unmute, feel free to ask any questions you have. I'm here for you. Hey, Lisa, this is Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Yes. What can I do for you? I will, since nobody else has jumped in, I will jump in with my very specific problem that we've already talked about, which is the access to success. Facebook page that exists, but no admin can be found. Right. Now, I sent you a link to a form that, to my knowledge, what I was told should work. Oh. Get Facebook's attention and let them know that you're having trouble with that page and they should be able to return control back to you. Did you get that link? Um... I don't remember seeing it, but that doesn't mean I didn't, I got, I didn't get it. <laughs> okay. Let me know. If not, I'll go back through my email and find the link again, because it took a while for me to actually track down. Uh-huh. And I will find it for you again, and I will send it to you again. Okay. Yeah, we've tried. I've tried messaging the admin. We've gone through all of the pat. We figured out who was leadership that year, and we can't. Oh, goodness. Can't. I know. That's and so, hard. And so um, I don't. Would you recommend that I don't start anything new until I can resolve that? No, I would go ahead and create it. And what you can do in your case, if Facebook then does return control back to you, say yourself, Uh one other person, then what you can do at that point is combine the two pages. Okay. It does have an allowance for that. So I wouldn't wait anymore. I'd go ahead and get that done. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Okay, great. You're welcome. Are there any other questions about Facebook at this point or any other questions about marketing your club since we do have about 10 minutes? Um, this is Ray. Can you hear me? Yes, Ray. I can hear you. How are you? Good. Um, we have our, our um, postmaster's meeting meets in the speech room at Chandler Gilbert Community College. Okay. And sometimes, especially at the end of the semester, we have a lot of students. And they stand up and talk, and not all of them. And they say they enjoy the meeting a lot. Is there any way we could utilize that to get more 
or uh, or those settings. Does your VPM or vice president of membership have a follow-up process to reach back to them to find out, yes, they did like the meeting, or they, would they like to come back in for a second visit? Well, some do come back for a second visit, and some actually join, but a very few join. Most of them are just doing it for extra credit. And that doesn't really tell you if they didn't like the meeting or if it's the day or the time that doesn't work. Um, if they're not coming back, they, the vice president of membership might reach back out and ask them if they haven't been there for two or three weeks, just to touch base and make sure everything's okay. Did they have any questions about their meeting or was the day and time not working out in their schedule? By doing that, you might be able to get a feel for what's really becoming the problem for people to join and see if that's something that's correctable, even by doing a moments of truth, for example, or by just trying to change something, or maybe by giving them a location of another Toastmasters club, see on the different day, but the time works, <laughs> maybe the day, or vice the versa. They're actually students at the community college, they're taking a speech class. Oh. And by attending a Toastmasters meeting, they get extra credit for their speech okay. class. So that's the only reason they're coming in? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can. It's breaking up a little bit, but that's the only reason they're coming in to get the extra credit for attending one meeting. Well, I can't hear anybody. You can't hear me? Oh, goodness. Sorry. I, I will address that back to you in email. Uh, let's see if I can get an email from you. Da, 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 da. I'll find a way to get an email for, for you, and I'll get that back to you. And you're out in Chandler, so I will find you. Or email me at PRM at aztoastmasters.org and we'll resolve that. Sounds, so, yeah, I can hear you. For the rest of them, it sounds like maybe it might be a good idea to talk to the instructor of that class, ask them how they're presenting it, and see if they can present it. It's not just something where you go and get extra credit and then they attend once, something that can actually help them with their own class if they attend for a longer period of time and actually become a member. But I, I would try and talk to the instructor and see if they can tweak what they're saying a little bit. Are there any other questions? Because we're going to get ready then to start our speech contest and whatnot, really ramp up the noise to try and get people's attention. Okay, is anyone having any other questions about anything that has nothing to do with Facebook, whether it's about creating an ad, any trouble you might be having using Canva or anything of that nature? Okay, if not, I'll let you go a little early, and I thank you guys for your time very much. I really appreciate it. I'm open to suggestions for topics for next week. Otherwise, I have a couple I can pull out, and I'm working with my region advisor on a couple more that are a little bit more media. So the next three or four weeks will not be just about social media, I promise, unless you have a question about social media. Uh, last thing, real quick, when you have a page, not a group, but a page, check an inbox, and you can see whether or not your page has any information, if you've connected the two, if anybody's done any posting. And then you can also check and see if your Instagram, which you can also connect, has any messages or whatnot, which was the first screen you guys saw, which now is taking forever to load. There we go. So now I can check my page. I can see if anyone's messaged the page itself or if anyone has any information from Instagram based on the posts that we had on Wednesday for our our meeting over at uh, the Small Business Expo. Hey, Lisa, I do have a quick question. Okay, go right ahead, Heidi. Are there any clubs that you could point out as great examples of clubs that are managing social media well? There is one by Al Gramondo. Boy, I'm trying to remember the name, but it's not Carpe Diem, but he does really good with that club, too. They just aren't allowed on Facebook. Um, what? <laughs> For, the, for those of you who don't know, Carpe Diem is our one club who is a prison club. So they have a captive audience. They can grow members because, hey, everybody's just there. <laughs> but they do have absolutely no problem meeting any of their DCP requirements. He had one club out in where he lives. I made a note of it, but I can't remember where the life of me, where it was. And they just do a phenomenal work on their Facebook page. They always have guests coming in between their website and their Facebook. So I'll reach out to Al and find that out. And I'll put that out in my email 
for you guys for next week so you can go check it out. But they have done a tremendous job with their page. That'd be great just to see some examples of what people post and other ideas of things that we could do to promote our club. Okay, terrific. One of the things I've seen from other districts, they just make a short little graphic. I don't know if I have it. I don't think I've tested it here on our page yet. I don't think I tested it on my page either for my club. But if, I, if all you did was just make three colored boxes and had the date and the time and the name of your club, that's what I've seen a lot of district clubs do. And it actually works for whatever reason. There's the image, put a little couple line sentence with it for people to contact. And that's really it. Isn't there uh, data that shows that Facebook posts with an image do X, X, Y, Z better than posts with no images? There is. And there's also data that shows if you do a video, it better. does even better than that. But if you're going to do a video, I would definitely make sure you have permission and that, let your guests know that you're going to do that. So that way no one's caught unawares. Uh-huh. Go, go back to what we were doing at TLI. You've got a safe part of the room and a not safe part of the room. And I would ask them that if they're aware of that, are they okay with it? If not, sit here. If you are, sit here. Mm-hmm. And that way you can capture everybody. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. Thank okay, you. Great. You're welcome. And I will see you guys next Tuesday at 7. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Good night. Thanks Good night, so. everyone.